About a month ago, I was diagnosed with skin cancer, melanoma to be specific. I actually got the call uh, painted as a fruit bat. I was actually filming some promo for my body paints and um, my my mom was gone. So the, the doctor actually, well, the doctor's office actually called my mom because I hate answering my phone, right? So like I never have anybody call me ever. I hate talking on the phone, it's just not my jam. And I was home with my gram. And I told her, cause she, she, was, uh, she was downstairs and I was upstairs. So I was like, if you need anything, you know, call me. Um, so she didn't have to go back up, up the stairs. So I was filming my fruit bat and my gram called me and she said, um, you need to go to the dermatologist. Y your mother called, you need to go to the dermatologist tonight. And my heart just, Everything just stopped. everything just stopped. Everything stopped. And I was like, tonight? And she's like, you need to take a shower. You need to go to the dermatologist tonight at five o'clock. And I'm like, is it cancer? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, I said, what? She said, yeah. It's funny because just talking about it, I feel like I'm going right back to where I was. And uh, so I <laughs> get off the phone. I, I, I didn't know what to think or how to feel. I, I didn't feel anything. Uh, I had one thought, which I'm not gonna share that thought uh, in this video, but I had one thought. And I got in the shower took my bat ears off, right? <laughs> I'm a fruit bat, finding out I got skin cancer. I get in the shower, I get my body paint off, my ma comes in the house, and I, 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 I don't really remember the conversation anymore. It's like my brain is starting to get rid of the memory in a weird sense, but I do remember just being like, what, what, what? Like, I think other than, I, I think that was my only, ma my, my only major thought was what? Cancer? Cancer? Me? Now I went to school for skincare. I'm actually licensed in aesthetics. So on the way there, <laughs> I told my mom, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, as, as long as it's not melanoma, cause melanoma is very intense. They called me in as the last appointment of the day. So we waited quite some time in the lobby of the doctor's office. And I get, I get a little weird with certain things and it's not really like me, it's more so my body. Like I've been diabetic for years and whenever I go get my blood drawn, when they take the needle out, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Certain situations, I just feel like I'm gonna pass out and it's just like a natural reaction. So I knew that that was gonna probably happen to me when I got there. So when we did get there, I immediately had my mom ask for an ice pack to put behind my neck and I like laid down in the, the lobby of the doctor's office while we waited for the last appointment because we did show up, I think 30 minutes before they wanted me even at the office. But you know, I mean, with everything going on and being told news like that, I wanted to be at the doctor's office immediately. I did not want to wait around at home. I just wanted to get there. If they could take me early, take me early. If I had to wait, I had to wait. I wanted to be there and that was it. And I think the craziest thing looking back on sitting at, between finding out and sitting in the doctor's office now that it's been a month and I can like look back and reflect is I felt nothing. I felt nothing. And for me to say that it's, I think the only moment in my life where I felt nothing at all. I wasn't scared. I wasn't sad. Um, I think I was just shocked. I think I was shocked because for the time in between getting the phone call that I have skin cancer, at this point I didn't know it was melanoma by the way. I just knew it came back as skin cancer. So for the time in between being told that I have skin cancer and going to the doctor and waiting in the doctor's office waiting to hear what it was, I did not know where the course of my life was about to go. My grandpa went through lung cancer. Um, obviously you hear the word cancer and it's just immediately terrifying. But I really just felt nothing. And I think that I 
didn't know if I was about to have to go into a route of many doctor visits, what stage this was going to be, if this was something that was going to be a turning point and a new journey in my life that I was about to have to go down, um, if, I, if this was gonna be something that I was going to survive or not. And that was um, all running through my head, but I just felt nothing. And I keep repeating that because I'm a very emotional person. I'm a Pisces, you know? I'm very much a Pisces. I'm a very emotional person. I'm a very theatrical person. You guys know if you've watched me for years how I am. And for me to have that memory of just nothing is creepy. We go back to the doctor's office and I, you know what? I, look, I, I think I might have freaked out the doctor a little bit. I didn't mean to because they brought me back with my mom. My mom was allowed to come back with me for this visit. Be I, I'm assuming due to the nature of the visit. And they had me sit down and the doctor sat down and the nurse was in there and everyone was very, very nice. And he told me I have melanoma. And what's even weirder is, you know, I think about it and literally like the doctor was like, so you do have melanoma. And I said, okay. And that was it. Like, I, I mean, everything he was telling me, I was just like, okay, okay. Yes, okay. And I think that I went into that mode because I didn't know what he was about to tell me and God forbid I pass out on this doctor. <laughs> but I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what he was gonna say and I didn't know, I just didn't know. And I think because of that, I responded with just very cold, um, <laughs> very solid answers. And I think I had my listening ears on larger than they have ever been because he was basically about to tell me the fates of my life, literally. And he told me that it was stage one melanoma, which is good news. He said melanoma can grow two ways. It can grow this way or it can grow this way. It's basically horizontally or vertically. Luckily, mine was growing horizontally and not getting deeper, and it was also stage one. Which, by the way, I should probably also mention that this was discovered on a routine, regular skin check. I go into the dermatologist to have my skin checked. I mean, I have, I think, pretty much majority of my life. And it's not just because I'm a redhead or anything like that. I just get it done because you should get it done and you should have your skin checked. It's not a big deal. The doctor just goes in, basically looks at your whole body, sees if there's any moles that look abnormal, any spots that look abnormal or anything that stands out to them. If they do see something that stands out to them, they take a biopsy, which I have had biopsies taken of moles in my life before. I think I've had, I want to say like four or five moles removed in my life. Listen, I've had one off the back of my head. I had a little needle injected in my head for numbing and they scooped it out. <laughs> so it wasn't my first time having a biopsy. And actually when he was doing my skin exam, again, he just, or he or she, or whoever your doctor is, just looks at your body and make sure there's nothing that stands out. I had this on my lower back and I also have two other moles on my body that are dark. I have one on my chest and then I have one on my leg, but I have had the one on my leg for, I don't remember ever not having it. And then the one on my chest, I actually got the same time as the one on my back, which was last year of uh, 2020, in case you're watching this video years from now. And funny enough, I may have jinxed myself a little bit because all of 2020, I was looking at the one on my lower back and I'm like, this thing is almost the center of my body. And I'm like, I really want this guy removed. I'm like, I don't know if they do cosmetic removal or not, but I was like, I want this guy off. So when I was getting my skin checked through my routine skin check, I also said, hey, this one popped up on my lower back and it got really dark really fast. Like the other ones that I've had or the other one that I have on my leg, like I said, I've had it my whole life, but it's been dark my whole life. Like I remember when I was like 10, they said they're like, we'll watch it, see if it changes. It never did. It just, it's just a really dark 
spot. But this one got really dark really fast, clearly, because it, it went from not being there to appearing and getting dark within that year that I had it. And it actually got dark quicker than that because I was questioning it a very little bit in 2020 for about half the year. So it probably got dark within six months. These are just guesses of me trying to like remember about it. But I had mentioned it to him. So he ended up looking at it with his little magnifying glass and a light and he's like, yeah, let's take this one off. Which in my mind, I'm also kind of like, good, 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 because I wanted it off. <laughs> I wanted it off anyways, because it was driving me crazy. Little did I know. So they sent that off for biopsy, because whenever they do take a mole off of you, they send it off for biopsy to make sure it's not um, abnormal or coming back as skin cancer. I have also never had an abnormal mole come back. It's always come back okay whenever they have removed moles that they thought were suspicious. And this one came back as melanoma. So the doctor is explaining to me that it is melanoma. It is stage one and they will be able to remove this with surgery. We're talking about dates of, of when I can get this, this skin cancer dug out of my body and they had an availability for the very next day. Now, mind you, during this time, I am on a billboard in New York City, Times Square, thanks to Twitch. My body painting is on a freaking billboard in Times Square. When was I supposed to leave? The very next day after I got called in the dermatologist. But instead of going to New York City, probably one of the happiest times in my life to see my body painting on a billboard in New York City, Times Square, I was in surgery for skin cancer. Funny how life works sometimes. One of the happiest moments of my life and one of the scariest moments of my life. I was going through two very, very, very drastic emotions. B -b but that day I was going through none because I was just shocked. <laughs> Canceled my flight to New York and went in for surgery the next day. Also at five, might've been 5.30. So within 24 hours, I, or right at 24 hours, I guess, I was being told that I have melanoma and I was in to have melanoma removed while already previously mentally and emotionally set to go see my billboard in Times Square. Thank you, Twitch, by the way. <laughs> Still super cool. So that night I go to sleep knowing that I'm going to be having this removed off of my back the next day, which I'll show pictures, by the way, of everything. Cause it was small. It wasn't, it wasn't like, you think of like melanoma and you think it's gonna be something wild and crazy and like a big spot or like they say to look for certain things like asymmetry and all different signs of it. And you, you just, you think it's gonna look a lot crazier than it actually does. And mine was small. And um, like I said, I, I had looked at it and I didn't, I never thought that it would be something so drastic. So that night I go home, I go to sleep. I slept okay. I woke up a lot of times in the middle of the night and I was going, I woke up, I would go, melanoma? Like, just like that. Like, I would just be like, melanoma? Me? I have melanoma? And I, I was so confused, it like didn't really register. The next day comes, I do not know what to do with myself. I am on the computer editing my bat video. So <laughs> now you guys know when you look back on my bat video that was being edited and filmed while all of this was going on. I just, I woke up in the morning, I played a little bit of Minecraft, I edited my, my, my bat video for my body paints and then the time rolled around and we went off to the doctor and uh, for surgery. Now obviously my ma could not come back with me for surgery. So she waited in the waiting room while I went in the back. And um, again, still, I very much did not feel anything, like emotionally. I was just very like, all right, it's time to do this. Let's go. And that's all I was thinking, because what choice did I have? It's not like I could be like, oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I don't want to go. Like I, I had to. So I guess I just went right to, yeah. Rock on, surgeon, right? So I go in the back, I lay down. No, 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 I go in the back and I tell the nurse, I say, hey. I'm like, so I might pass out. I don't know. I've never had surgery before. I have, I did have my wisdom teeth out, but I don't 
think that really counts. Um, I was knocked out for that. I was not knocked out for this, which I'm actually very thankful by the way I wasn't knocked out for this. I am more afraid of being put under than I am of someone cutting into me. Strange, but that's just, I don't know. I, I wanna be awake and aware and know what's going on. But I wouldn't be awake and aware had I passed out. So I told the nurse, I said, hey, I might pass out. I've never had this done before. I don't know anything about it. And she's like, okay, like no problem. I'll get an ice pack for you. She's probably like my age, by the way. Let me know, you know, if you're gonna feel lightheaded, you will be laying down, so you should be okay. Something along the lines of that. I don't know, I don't really remember anymore. But like I said, my brain is like starting to already kind of get rid of the full memory of it. So I lay down on my stomach because like I said, it's on my lower back. She puts like papers or something over me. I don't know, I don't know what she did. I'm not a doctor, I'm a body painter. And she starts giving me the numbing injections, okay? <laughs> oh, they weren't bad. They were not, they weren't bad. But oh, some of them were spicy, baby. Spicy. But I just remember some of them I was like <gasps> And then I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> It was only a few, it wasn't all of them, but I did have a lot of stabs, a lot of numbing, a lot of stabs. I mean, but at some point I didn't feel the stabs because I was numb, so it was kind of like, I was just aware mentally that I was having, you know, so many like <laughs> So she numbs around the outside, of right, right around my mole, and then she's like, the doctor will come in, look at it, draw like a little marker, and then she'll, she'll numb me more. So then the surgeon comes in, this lady, by the way, so much energy. She comes in, she's like, hi! And I'm laying down, so I'm like this, right? So if you're walking in and you're like this and I'm laying down like this, she goes, Hi, I'm so sorry you have this. And I'm like, it's okay. And I'm like, you're removing it, right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, you're just, you're so young. And I'm like thinking, I know. So she draws something on my back, which I know now. It's like the surgery looks like an eye and they like basically carve out that whole entire thing. It's a, it's a it's a decent size for the fact that it was so small. Apparently I was in the room for 45 minutes, a, like might have been like a half an hour or so before the surgeon actually came in because she was finishing up with someone else or something of that nature. I didn't even realize how long I had been back there because I'm talking to the nurse and I'm like, yeah, so I'm supposed to be in New York today, but instead I'm here and I'm on YouTube and I do body painting and I stream to Twitch and I gotta tell my Twitch chat and I don't know how I'm gonna tell my Twitch chat and like they're so funny and like so but it's like you know I'm sitting there I'm sitting there about to have you know cancer removed out of my body and I'm sitting there you know talking about I'm sitting there talking about my community. Like I'm sitting there talking about you guys, you know. The whole time, by the way, <laughs> the whole time. That's all I talked about. That's the only thing I talked about the whole time. And um, so the surgeon comes in and you know, she sits down and she does her surgery and I'm, you know, telling her again about like my Twitch community and my Twitch chat and you know, telling her a little bit about YouTube and what I do and body painting and my community and um, all of us collectively. And uh, I get my surgery done and she leaves. Of the experience that I could have had through all of this, I, I had the, the best experience that I could have had if, if, this was, if this was meant to happen to me in my life, if this was something I was meant to experience. Thank God it was stage one, the dermatologist caught it, and my surgeon did an excellent job. My scar is very nice looking. At the time, I didn't even care, you know, they were like, oh, you know, do you care about scars? Like we can, you know, recommend scar cream for like later on. And I'm like, listen, as long as you got this out of my body, I do not care about a scar. I even joked when I was there, I was like, you know, my favorite thing to paint is stitches. I've never had stitches in my life. These are my first stitches. Now I got a great reference. And the nurse asked me, do you want to see a picture of it? And I was still laying down. So I knew I did want to see it. And uh, I knew I wasn't gonna pass out from seeing it because I was laying down. So I was like, yes, I would love to see it. And so she showed me. So I did actually see what it looked like that day. Still didn't register. This was like cut out of my back. And uh, very nice, very straight, clean line. Does that really matter? No, but I was super impressed when I saw the picture. I was like, wow, it looks great. So surgery's done. I go to the front. And you know, of course my poor mother's in the front thinking I'm like passed out back there. And I almost told the nurse too. I almost said, can you please let my mom know that I'm awake back here and I'm not passed out. But then I figured, I'm like, you know what, this is almost done. Um, oh, but by the way, during the surgery, so for the surgery itself, I didn't feel anything. I mean, I was I was numb. It was weird because it was like, I could tell that she was 
doing something. And then I don't know like how the surgery works particularly, but it kind of sounded like a hole puncher and it felt like she took like three really big punches out of my back. And like I said, I don't know how it works, so that's probably like not accurate, but that's what it felt like and that's what it sounded like, like a giant hole puncher. And then she said something like, okay, that's it, it's gone. Like you're melanoma free or you're cancer free or something like that. And I was just like, what? And I'm still processing somewhere in my brain that I was just told this yesterday and now today it's gone. And then I also heard some popping like pop, 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 like that. And so I figured that they were like cauterizing it because I'm familiar with the sound from um, laser scar removal. So I knew that they were using a laser, but overall like that was it. And then I did feel a couple pokes for like the stitches, but it was nothing more than like a and it wasn't bad at all. So I go home from the surgery and I basically look like I have a diaper on my back. Like I had so much padding on my back. I had to leave that on for 48 hours, I think. I couldn't shower. And then I was able to take that off and then I had Steri strips on. So I had a really big patch of uh, of strips. I'm gonna show some pictures by the way. So um, if you're not good with like injuries or seeing like dried blood or you think it's gonna make you feel nauseous, um, feel free to just look away and you could just listen to what I'm saying or click away or do whatever you need to do. But I will be showing photos like right now in this portion of the story. So I had Steri strips still on my lower back and this is the first time I'm seeing it with the strips on and I look at it and I'm like, ew, like wow, that's large. That's a lot bigger than what the picture looked like, but I'm thinking, okay, it's, it, there's some blood in there. So that is why it, you know, looks like that. So over the next few days is where everything kind of smushes together. So I'll just be talking about it overall. Over the next few days, it was uncomfortable. It wasn't unbearable, but it would definitely sting. Um, it was sore to move. It was sore to get out of bed. I was also very scared of the thought, which by the way, I had internal stitches and external stitches. So the internal stitches obviously stay in and they like melt away or something. I don't know. Again, not a doctor. And then the external stitches I had to have removed two weeks later. But in my head, I'm getting out of bed and I'm like, oh no, what if the weight of my butt right when I get out of bed it goes bloom stretches my lower back and rips open the surgery site so I'm like very nervous about that I'm moving very slowly and I had to move quite slowly anyways just because of it was sore from the surgery you know and I wanted nothing more than to see what it looks like you know even though I already knew what it looked like but I wanted to see the stitches and I wanted to see what it, I wanted to see what it looked like. I never did get to see it with the stitches actually. Actually, wait, no, I did get to see with the stitches in. Okay, they must have been clear sti- Yeah, I did! Oh my god, I just realized I did see it with the stitches in. So the stitches must have been clear. Well, that wasn't a good reference then. So over the next few days, it starts to really settle in. And I don't know at what point it actually settled in, but I think it was maybe five days later, something like that. I looked in the mirror and I went, wow, they took that out of my back. And it really, really hit me. And I, I, here I am thinking, I get home from the doctor and I'm like, I wonder if I'm gonna be able to stream tomorrow. And, and during this whole time, I wanted nothing more than to sit at my computer and play Minecraft. All I wanted to do is play Minecraft those, those, those days of healing. I think it was because I wanted to do something and I wanted to be on my computer and I couldn't body paint because I had an open wound. Well, not open wound. I had a surgery, so I couldn't paint. And I couldn't stream because I couldn't sit for very long. So I was like, if I, can, if I can play Minecraft for two hours, I'm in a good spot. Couldn't do that for a while. Over the next few days, I had a lot of realizations. And when I said that I didn't feel anything the first day. I didn't feel anything the second day. I didn't feel anything the third day. It started to settle in, I think, the fourth or fifth day of what was actually going on. But the weirdest, one of the weirdest things, I guess I should say not the weirdest, but one of the weirdest things was I felt alive. I felt like I was in this room right now filming. I felt the camera. I felt the lights when I was in my room. I felt that I was laying in my bed when I was in the car. I felt that I was in the car and I was just, like it sounds like so silly, but it's like, you know, I was like looking at the trees and like, I was just like, wow, wow. 
like I'm alive, you know? And it was, it's, I mean, I say you know, but I don't know if you know or not, but it's just like, it, it was, it's something that is the weirdest thing to experience because I never experienced that before. It's like, you know that you're here, but like you, it, it's a, it's a really weird thing to feel. And, and my other, my other, my other feeling was that I was thankful. I was so thankful. I just still am thankful, but, but, but I was so thankful. I was, it was my, I think it was actually my only emotion for a good amount of time was that I was thankful. If, again, if I had to go through this in my life, thank God I went through it the way that I went through it because it was stage one. And then I found out two weeks later when I did get my stitches out that I got a call from the dermatologist that it was a hundred percent removed. So I am melanoma free cancer free, skin cancer free. The surgery was 100% successful. And um, it's it's funny cause I, I mean, I figured that it was successful, but getting just getting that phone call and hearing that it was, was nice. Every day I just, I woke up, I felt thankful. Throughout the day, I felt thankful. Going to sleep, I mean, I was, I was scared at night and I was, um, you know, thinking, what if it's somewhere else? What if it's spread somewhere else? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Everything was just, what if? Like, how is it possible for this type of cell to be in my body? Does this mean that now for the rest of my life, I'm gonna be scared? Like, it's just so crazy that I, it's, it's like I had it and it's gone. And I'm so thankful that I had it and it's gone. And I'm so lucky that it was caught and I'm so lucky that it was able to be removed and I'm just so thankful for that. And one thing I should probably mention as well is that I'm not really a sunbather. And you're probably looking at me like, yeah, Lex, you're super pale, you're a redhead, of course you're not a sunbather. I actually do tan, I get pretty dark. And in my life, like total, if I had to like guess, for a year, I was laying out for about a half an hour a day, two months out of the year that one year, that was a couple years ago. And then, so, pro so probably, I'm trying to think, probably like three years of my life, I laid out for about 30 minutes to an hour, two, two to three months out of the year. So two, two, four, six, so probably like six months of laying out 30 minutes every day, every other day. That's probably pretty accurate. Which when you look in the perspective of 28 years, it's not that much tanning. I, I did I did get a couple of really bad sunburns. We went to Hawaii when I was 16 and I didn't have sunblock on because I was just like, eh, that's fine. I don't need it if I get a sunburn, whatever. And I walked next to the ocean and my shoulder, actually you could see, if you, yeah, you could see. I have a lot of freckles on this shoulder. All of these freckles on my shoulder, they are from the burn when I was in Hawaii walking next to the ocean because the sun reflected off of the ocean, bounced up and burned my shoulder really bad. So I have permanent freckles on my shoulder. And then, you know, I would get some sunburns at like maybe a baseball game or at, I don't know, any kind of event in which the sun was there. But point being, I wasn't like a, it's summer, let's go lay out, baby. And again, it was on my lower back. I don't wear clothes. Like I don't really wear crop tops that often, et cetera, so. And from this experience of, I feel like seeing life in a whole new perspective. Like I feel like every so often you run into things in your life where you hit like a turning point. And I would have to say this is a turning point in my life because I feel like I looked at some, I looked at, I looked at things very differently and I looked at them of, I don't wanna be stressed out anymore, I just wanna be happy. I posted shorts this whole last month because I wanted to take a little bit of time off and just live my life. I've been doing this for eight years now and I've never taken full time off. Anytime I go somewhere, I'm always doing something. I'm doing emails, I'm doing updates on social media, I'm always doing something. So I took two weeks off for myself and to just live. And I went to California and I saw the ocean and I, I actually cried seeing the water because I mean, it's been, you know, obviously a very rough last two years for everybody and I haven't seen the ocean in forever. And one of my, you know, happiest places of being is at, at, by the sea in the ocean in California. And I saw it and I started crying cause you know, it was just like, God, how many times have I seen you? 
the ocean. How many times have I seen you? You know, and I've never, I never realized how beautiful you are, you know? And uh, cheesy, oh god. The amount of cheese that, that just came out of my mouth. Gouda, French onion. French onion's not a cheese, it's a soup. But it doesn't matter because there's cheese in that soup. And I also wear sunblock every day of my life now. <laughs> I wear sunblock all the time. And I don't use it in spray form, I use it in lotion form. You guys can do your research on um, different sunscreens and, and whatnot. I'm still kind of afraid, not afraid to go in the sun, but I still, like, when I was at the beach, I didn't want to sit on the beach. Um, I was still just kind of going out before 11 a.m. and then going out after 4 p.m. when the sun wasn't as strong. And I was also still in a sweatshirt in, like, 80 degrees. I do not recommend that. Very hot, but I just, you know, I just, I'm, st I'm still in, I'm still, still nervous about it. And I'm sure that'll wear off over time. Definitely always wearing sunblock for the rest of my life. And I'm never gonna lay out in the sun ever again. I will never tan ever again. So if you see me with a spray tan on, just know it's because I want to have a summer tan without having the summer tan. You know what I'm saying? I don't need another skin cancer spot to have a tan that I would naturally have had I laid out when I can just spray tan it on. I wanted to film this video not only to let you guys know why I've been gone for a month and why things have been purely just shorts for a month because I was, I was going through it. And while I don't really owe the internet an explanation as to why I have been gone because, as I said, a lot of things that are bad that do happen in my life, I like to keep to myself. I also just want to make this video to say, go see a dermatologist, specifically the dermatologist, and just have them look at your skin and see if anything looks weird. And hey, it's not a big deal to get a biopsy done. They give you a tiny little numbing injection, maybe it's tiny, I don't know, it doesn't feel like anything though, but they give you a numbing injection and then they just kinda like scoop it out and then that's it and they send it off for biopsy and it can come back as nothing and it can come back as abnormal and it can come back as something of the nature that I received. And um, it's better to catch it early than it is to just wait it out because looking at this mole, um, this is what it looks like and let me scoot over, this is what it looked like and that was actually the largest mole on my entire body. So I don't have anything bigger than that. Uh, and it was small. It was not. It was not a big. It was not a big mole whatsoever. And then I also have been using scar cream. Uh, I've been using something called Silogen, and I think it's been helping my scar a lot. When I first actually took all my bandages off and got everything off, it was really puffy and swollen. I don't know if I have a picture of it or not, but if I do, I'll put it up right now. If not, I'm just leaning to the side for no reason. And then after you. Using Silogen, I've been using that for I, at least two weeks because, yeah, I, I think going on three weeks and my scar is completely flat now and um, it looks really good. I mean, for it's if I had to have it, it looks great, you know? But for comparison, this turned into this. Just get a check for the first time. Be aware of where your moles are. Be aware of if you get a new one. I also don't want you to take this video and freak out and look at every mole on your body and be like, oh my god! But at the same time, also just make the appointment to go see a dermatologist. It's really worth it. It's really worth the time. It doesn't take long. It is painless. All they do is just look at you. If I did not go for my routine skin check, which by the way, I didn't go in 2020 because of everything that was happening. So I maybe would have caught it even earlier in 2020, but I wasn't able to go to the dermatologist in 2020. But regardless, I'm extremely thankful that this was caught because had it not been caught, I don't know when it would have been. Maybe not till the next year when I got my skin checked again, because I don't know if it would have gotten larger, if it would have changed even more the later stages it got in. Like, I'm not sure that information, but I just know that I'm glad that my mom scheduled our skin check and that it was removed. And I'm very thankful that this was, hopefully this is it, you know? Hopefully this never comes back again in my life. And um, I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful.